What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Deep Corner. This is episode five. I'm Rob St. Clair, your host, and I'm very pleased to be joined today by the Chicago Iceman captain and team rep and the VLA director of player relations, Mr. Tim Faulkner. Welcome to the show. How you doing, Rob? Happy to be here. Great, buddy. Good to have you. Uh, th- thanks for hopping on. I understand you've got quite the busy day of all kinds of volleyball stuff. You uh, just finished coaching high school. You're about to go to Iceman practice. Is that right? That, is, that a, is that a typical day or what's going on here? Uh, busy all the time around here. Uh, I'm a assistant dean at a small private high school in Chicago, and I coach the boys volleyball team there. In the fall, I coach the girls volleyball team uh, at Latin school. And then, uh, yep, tonight I once we're done, a little bit about a half hour after we're done, I've got Iceman practice rolling in. Love it. It's uh, cool. You guys are getting in the gym. You guys got a you know a little weekly date to go go hit the ball around. It's good stuff. Yep. So uh, a lot a lot of what I get to because. You have your hands in kind of everything in the Chicago world and in the VLA. Uh, but first, I want to talk about you as a player. So, for the people that don't, that haven't seen you play before and that might not recognize your name, uh, talk to me. Let's just kind of talk about your career from from start to finish. So, you're you're a Chicago Burbs boy from Arlington Heights, right? Yep. What high, up in, what uh, high school did you go to? I grew up in Arlington Heights and I went to Buffalo Grove High School. You went to BG. Okay, got it. Uh, pretty consistently good high school boys program for the people unfamiliar. I mean, that's what we told ourselves. I don't know what they've been doing for the last decade, but uh, during uh, my tenure there and the couple of years beforehand, we had a really strong program going. Yeah, they, they were good when I was playing as well. Uh, I'm from not very far away, obviously. Uh, so you're a setter, and I love talking to setters. I'm just fascinated by your guys' brains and how you run your offense, that's, and that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you did not go anywhere and play in college, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, Originally, I went to Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin, uh, but it really just wasn't the right fit for me, and uh, and I was only there for my freshman year. Okay. And so, with with all that, how did you continue like your upward trajectory as a volleyball player? I'm really interested in that. Like, without really a formal coach post high school. Uh, You know, I think uh, for the most part, my coach was. Originally, just the game. Uh, you know, when I left Carthage, I was just looking for every opportunity to play, uh, every open gym, every league, every adult tournament that I could get connected with. Um, you know, I, my my first uh, USAV adult nationals, I played double B uh, and took second, unfortunately. But uh, wow! Shout out to Team Ultimate Exposure for any of you guys listening. I uh, just had a really awesome experience and slowly over the years ended up working my way up the uh, USA Volleyball uh, rankings. Um, originally, uh, I went to a community college after I left Carthage for a couple of semesters and realized I had no idea what I wanted to study. Uh, so I did what's called an exposure tour uh, through Bring It USA Promotions. Uh, and it was where a bunch of uh, non-Europeans, uh, not just Americans, because there were two Australians and a Canadian or two, actually, uh, Team Pineapples, Yasmin Cole, also on on that was where I first met all of them on a, a volleyball tour in Spain, and we were all trying out to uh, compete uh, overseas, and uh, I was lucky enough to get picked up by a team in France. Awesome. That's... Uh remarkable from not having played in college to just get I, I won't even call it a lucky break because you clearly worked you worked really really hard from you know just playing touching the ball whenever you could from double b all the way to professional caliber volleyball overseas yeah well you know i will call it a lucky break because i was uh i, I turned 20 while i was over there so i was just a kid uh somebody took a chance on me and gave me the opportunity to play and compete uh and i couldn't be more grateful for it so uh, what what was that what was that experience like? What was the the difference in level? How long did it take you to get your game up to speed? Um, it was kind of a funny situation. I was originally going to be the backup setter, and I just by circumstance I ended up becoming the primary setter. So I kind of had to I had no choice but to step up and uh, and kind of um, you know play the game and 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 uh, do my best to. Uh, support the more experienced players that were around me. Um, I had a phenomenal experience. Um, I really loved uh, all the people who were really welcoming. The town was incredible uh, and warm and really made it feel like a home to me. Um, I struggled a lot, as, as some people do, with uh, being so far away from home. And uh, really, in the end, I decided not to continue playing. Um, originally, I was going to 
my plan was to kind of work my way up the tiers of the of the leagues in Europe and try to see uh, what level I could make uh, after a couple of years. But I recognized that uh, I was just not the right fit for me, and that uh, I really wanted to be home uh, with all my friends and family. Yeah, that is a hard lifestyle, and like something that a lot of people just can't appreciate who haven't done it. I haven't done it. I can't appreciate it. But so many of our American guys are going overseas to play to to you know pursue the dream, and several of the guys in your Iceman roster, for that matter. Yeah, it's just not easy, man. It's really not easy, which is part of why we're trying to trying to build up this league to what we want it to be. But mm-hmm. that's uh, you're just an awesome an awesome story about what uh, what where the game can take you in the world and where it's continuing to take you. So while you were while you were over there in France, um, what's What's something you learned about playing the setter position, like about what you had to, how you had to train your brain? Like if you, I don't know, a, a balance perhaps between like, you know, distributing your offense evenly or going to the guy who's going to score you points. Talk about like the technical details of setting a little bit. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing that I took away from my experience uh, overseas was um, a focus on manipulating the block. Um, and recognizing that although you're going to have your primary, you know, primary hitters and your go-to when you're when the game is tight and when you're kind of in and out of system, you know who's going to be uh, your highest percentage attackers. Um, what my coach really instilled in me is a focus on recognizing that if you're sending your middle, uh, you know, if you're sending them to for a 31 or for a shoot, then what you're really doing not only is um, is changing the look for the opposing blocking middle against your middle, but you're also giving your opposite hitter an extra second and a half uh, of you know uh, without a without a double block. Yep. And if you're able to keep them in system, then you can really give your give your attackers the best one-on-one opportunity uh, every time. In system, of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, yeah, that's that's a great lesson. It's not about yeah, if you're if you're controlling offensive spacing, it's not about the hitter that you're controlling. It's about the you know the ripple effect in the rest of the offense. And we we've seen a lot of that at the highest levels in the past several years about the different spacings that people run. Bic, I think that's really fascinating. Like to move blockers around, but it's really like to to open up your right side a lot of the time. Because yep. at uh, at the highest levels, that seems to be the guy. Mm. And um, you've got a couple nice options on your Iceman team. So we certainly do. Uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get to your squad uh, in a little bit, but. Um, first, I want to talk about the the origin story of the Iceman team. Um, uh, get into a little bit of history lesson for the people here. Uh, I talked with Vince last week about about the PVL days, like how his Arizona team was born into the PVL, and, yep. the, and the Icemen are no different. But you were not associated with Chicago right away. Uh, tell me the story. Not officially. Not officially. Yeah. So originally, the Iceman came to be, so uh, like I said, I originally started off with a group of uh, friends playing Double B. Um, eventually, I was fortunate enough to make friends uh, with a bunch of former um, IPFW and just starting a new ball. Um, it was a fantastic group of guys who I still keep in touch with, a lot of them uh, now, um, you know, the Loyola program and the IPFW or now Purdue Fort Wayne program, uh, I know you talked a little bit about it with Loy, are just have such a great alumni community. Totally. Like, really, just a, a great group of people that come through uh, those programs and uh, are just great people to have in your life. And I was fortunate enough that their setter was unable to play for most of the season, so that I ended up becoming their primary setter. Um, we ended up winning Double A uh, Open in Louisville, which I think was 2013. That year. That sounds right. Something like that. Um, but then when we won Double A, we decided that we wanted to uh, throw in our hat at the Open division. And when we were going to register for Open, we were told that Open no longer existed. Right. Uh, and so that was the year that PVL started. Mm-hmm. Um, and they said, "Well, we're not doing Open anymore. We're gonna we're doing this PVL Premier Volleyball League." Uh, and the re- our response was, "Awesome, great! Like get us in that." Yeah, I mean, we're all as most of the volleyball community just gets excited about growing the sport and the ability to play higher level competition and just show the youth players that there's more volleyball in the U.S. than they know. Yeah. Um, 
Great point. And so, unfortunately, when we reached out to the Great Lakes region, which is obviously where we're based in Chicago, uh, they had already started making moves and developed a team uh, at the time called uh, Lights Out. Um, and so Lights Out is a, an old-school Chicago team that's actually still around today. Oh, yeah. uh, Shout-out to them. There, there's been a, a revamping of new young players along with some of the players that have been playing with them for a long time. Uh, it's really nice to see them uh, with some new life to them. Um, so they already pretty much had their roster full, and we still wanted to play, so I said, all right, well, there are, I honestly, 30-something or nearly 40 regions in, the, in USA Volleyball. I'm going to reach out to every region that does not have a men's team, and I'm going to see if they're interested in having a men's team. And um, I ended up getting in contact with, uh, with Lynn, uh, who was the head of the Iowa region, and they, they didn't have a men's team. They were looking to grow uh, boys' volleyball in, in the state, uh, and I asked them if they were interested in uh, letting us uh, use their name to be the team. And so we became the Iowa Icemen, even though... I think 90% of our roster was based in Chicago. Yep. Yeah, the, uh, awesome story, first of all. Yeah, the, back in the PBL days, it was you could only have one team per USAV region, so that was Correct. why you had some some a little unorthodox like region titles associated with some of the teams, like the Rising Tide, who's still playing yeah. with us in the VLA, was the Chesapeake Bay region in Maryland, uh, yeah. which because you can only have one team from SoCal, they had to you know, kind of do the same thing you did. Yeah. Uh, kind and, of the same and, story. For good reason, too, but when you have a city like Chicago, you know, you got three million people here. There's such a strong volleyball community Tremendous. here that there was so more than enough talent to form two, you know, two real solid teams. Uh, and so fortunately, uh, Iowa and, and the region uh, was uh, generous enough to allow us that opportunity, and we are forever grateful for, to them. Yep, and... The kind of in a sense the band is still together today. So yeah. the, the PBL the PBL had its nice little run, and it um it was always really electric volleyball to watch at nationals. So really all it was was the it replaced the open division at adult nationals, and it, um, so they played you know you played best of fives and the kind of the same format that carried throughout across the years. Uh, yeah, it, it made uh, it took a great foundation and just made it a little more formal. Exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much what it was because all there was at the time was just you know just the best adult teams who played together semi consistently would run into each other at open at nationals mm -hmm. anyway. And yep. so yeah, they just kind of they they formalized that and it was cool. But that that was it for the whole year. That was like the only event. Um, but people got so into it. I I certainly did watching it from afar, like uh, getting into it for like just at nationals. Uh, but they were unable to kind of put it, push it past that level. Mm. Um. So fast forward a couple of years, and here you are now with no reason not to be associated with your home city of Chicago. Yep. And and you're competing in the VLA, which is which is awesome. Very um, exciting. Uh, so you get you guys have been able to get out of get out on the court the past couple of years. What are the differences that you noticed between the PVL days and what we're kind of looking at now competitively? Uh, I I think really the greatest thing about the VLA is that we have we're able to get more exposure to the young players out there. PV, you know, almost not exclusively, but almost exclusively competing at adult nationals. Um, and, you know, the, the great thing about the VLA partnering with AU and JVA and USAV is that it just it grows the sport on a, on a platform that has never, that we've never really had before. That's right. Yeah, so like when you guys, for example, will be at the first event in Louisville, and which is less than a month, which is insane. Uh, yep. So many thousands of people are going to walk by that court there and see you guys playing. It's just going to be awesome. The atmosphere is going to be unbelievable. You can really feel the energy at those events, and uh, you know it's the the crowd is is so great and supportive and positive, and uh, yeah, it's it's really going to be an awesome experience. Yeah, which you guys deserve because the level of volleyball is so high, and I can talk for hours about how great of a spectator sport volleyball is. So, uh, yeah, the, these these people are in for a treat. The ones the ones that are going to come to events. So, uh, let's talk about your squad a little bit. You guys, sure. uh, as as good of a volleyball region or area as Chicago is, pretty much all your guys are either Chicago products or have relocated to Chicago after mm -hmm. college or whatever it is. Uh, you've got, but you also have several guys that are actively playing overseas right now. Uh, Correct. Who's overseas right now, and uh, when can you expect some of those guys back? Just kind of talk me through your roster. 
Sure. Uh, so a lot of the um, a lot of our players who are overseas right now, the the core group of them are uh, Dan Starkey uh, at outside, and and a little bit of, he might play a little opposite this year. Um, Will Craft, uh, Sunil Thomas is a new face uh, to the Iceman squad. He played at Ohio State and is currently playing in uh, Sweden. Uh, also a Chicago-based player mm-hmm. uh, and, and phenomenal athlete. Um, we have Dave Hancock who's playing in Germany right now. And uh, who else we got? I believe that's it right now. That might be it. Unless, oh, sorry, uh, Avery Aylesworth. Oh, yeah. Uh, is, uh, Stud is a libero. As well. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, uh, both of our, uh, two out of our three liberos are uh, based out of Loyola, the other one being Peter Gisaitis, who uh, is uh, now one of, the, one of the veteran players on the Iceman, like myself. Uh, and we have a new uh, young player uh, who we're pretty excited to have joining us this year, uh, Colin Merck. Nice. Uh, another really good pickup. Yeah. Uh, great player and, uh, and great person, too. Just an awesome teammate to have on the court. Cool. So, yeah, uh, you've got you at the setter spot. You've got Sunil Thomas. Uh, is that it? Or you got any, any more depth at setter? Uh, oh, man, yeah. Uh, we got depth everywhere. Uh, you know, Connor Eaton is going to be returning again. Great just, to hear. Uh, fantastic setter uh, and a lot of fun to, to have on the court and on your bench. Um, outsides, we're going to have... Uh, Jeff Sprayberry is a new player. Uh, Kyle Overby is returning. Uh, I'm Andre Dyakov is going to be uh, coming back for at least yes. one, one or two Excellent. events. Great uh, news. Who, uh, it's just uh, honestly, it's just an honor to uh, to play with somebody uh, as high caliber player as he is, and uh, it, I'm really fortunate to able to be able to call him a friend as well because he's an equally good person. Great guy. Uh, Griffin Shields on the opposite. Uh, you know Joe Smallzer um, on the on the opposite. Uh, Bobby Walsh is going to be at more events. He was only able to make one uh, in, in previously, but he's going to be uh, joining us for more events as well. Brandon Poindexter, Peter Dabrowski, Scott Zawicki. Um, we really have a, uh, a deep roster. Uh, sorry, who did I forget? Mark Jones, uh, oh, yeah. Trevor Wiskersher out of Lewis. Um, it's really great. We're really fortunate that we can have you know, a, a, a base of players who, aside from those who are overseas and... Uh, and Andre, who's who's based in Houston, um, we really have a a large group of high talent, high caliber players in Chicago, um, which is better because we can, you, you know, practice. practice together and yeah. get more repetitions together. But it also gives us the opportunity to have more exhibitions and showcases and really uh, get involved in the Chicago volleyball youth world, uh, which is really what our goal is uh, moving forward. Which is great. Uh... I'm me being a Chicago boy, of course. I I love the the opportunity for people to do that. Like I don't know if, when I was in middle school or high school, if I had seen volleyball on the level that you guys are playing it, I would have been hooked way earlier than I already was. And I, I think yeah, the chances to get that in front of of boys age 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever, uh, could do huge things for the growth of the game because the opportunities in the state of Illinois are already there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Volleyball nerd recognizes volleyball nerd. Yeah, you know uh, it, dude. I, I spent all my high school days trying to get to every Lewis and Loyola match that I possibly could, uh, just to see, you know, just the physicality, you know, compared to us back in the day is, uh, is just, you know, it's a huge jump, and to see such high level volleyball is, uh, uh, for for players now, uh, you know, the uh, opportunity. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, so let's see, what else do I want to get to here? Uh, with with your ability to practice, which is a luxury that not every team is going to have because most of your guys yeah. are, are mostly centrally located in Chicago, uh, What what is like an average Iceman practice like? Like a lot of your guys have, have tremendous playing experience overseas or at high levels in college, but I have noticed that a lot of them, like uh, Overby is a really good example, a guy that has leveled up substantially since he was playing in college. Oh, yeah. Uh, how can you run a practice for guys that are already this good to come together as a team more and improve on certain things? Um, I think finding the balance between drill work and competition is really key because, you know, for players um, at our age and our experience, you know, if it's all, if it's just drills and drills and drills, it can get old and, you know, you, you, the same problem that you have with kids. If all you're doing is drilling, you're going to lose interest and lose some of that engagement and the, and the level is, is going to go down. Um, I think I'm fortunate that the whole roster, you know, the, the, all the Icemen are really committed to the sport and the game and the team. And so when they walk in, you know, we do 
uh, a longer warm up than than we used to, and now that we're now that we're getting up there in, in our in age, no one's um, getting any younger, man. <laughs> yeah, very thorough warm ups because uh, uh, old man injuries are becoming more prevalent now. Um, but uh, just a really solid warm up, you know, controlled setting drills, uh, game type situations, uh, and then progressing to full on play towards the uh, later half of the of the practice. Awesome, uh, with. Your experience running that practice and your experience coaching uh, high school age boys, girls, club, uh, what's something that is similar in how you might, you know, run a, run a team of professional caliber men versus, I don't know, high schoolers, and what's something that's different? Uh, you know, something uh, similar, I've got to say, is uh, you still have to be really patient. Um, you know, a lot of... Uh, the challenges of, of coaching high schoolers and middle schoolers is they're kids and their attention span is is limited and you have to be mindful that uh, although we may have a lot of information to offer them, you we need to keep them engaged and keep them active or you can really easily lose a lot of the things that you're working on. Uh, and so, you know, that's a, a balance that I find is, uh, is still there with uh, adult practices is we need to move at a pace that is keeping everybody engaged, but make sure that there is a purpose to everything that we're doing. Well said. And uh, this is probably an easier question. What's different between, uh, you know, the, the high school level and, and the, the Iceman level? Um, it's certainly easier not having to spend too much time on the very basics. The mechanics, um, yeah. Yeah, and like an actual mechanics and form, it's not really something that we are working to make major adjustments on. Uh, the great thing is is that with the wealth of knowledge that's on the court is we're all able to help each other with little things if we see some see an issue or um, in our form or I guess the bigger difference was or is going to be decision making is more of the focus than actual actual execution. Yeah. Uh, recognizing situations and deciding uh, what the best choices are for us to be successful and keep everything uh, high percentage efficiency. Yeah, that's that's a good point and an interesting dynamic because you guys don't have like an official coach on the roster. It's kind of just a collective hive mind of all you guys' years of volleyball experience. And yeah. I talked to a little bit uh, to Pasquale and Loy from Team Pineapple about how that kind of works for them because they're in a little bit of a similar spot. But, yeah. uh, but you guys really all could hop on the court at any time and be not interchangeable but pretty close. How, uh, I don't know, what? When you're in in between sets in a match, or you call a timeout, how does it work with all all the brains and all the things that you're seeing and the adjustments that you're making? You know, it's actually surprisingly organic. Um, that's definitely something that I was, that you know, to be to have in the back of your mind and to be concerned about going into the dynamic of a team. But um, we really have such a good group of guys that you know we kind of let the di different people take over at different times. If I'm setting, then, you know, Connor is usually going to take the lead on kind of commanding the team from the sideline. If Connor's setting, I'm going to be doing the same thing from the bench. Um, we have a couple of people who tend to take the lead on, uh, on our, in, during our timeouts, uh, specifically Peter Gisaitis, uh, who is uh, one of my favorite people that I've played with in my in my. Years and has a very calm and positive uh, presence uh, both on the court and off the court. So uh, he tends to take uh, a lot of the uh, speaking time uh, in the huddles, and uh, everybody kind of falls in because we're all dedicated to moving forward and, and staying focused and working together to uh, achieve victory. That's a that's a nice little transition. I kind of want to talk about what what being like a mature volleyball player really means it's it's very very hard to quantify that but something i've seen with the Icemen and with with you in particular because of all the success you've had in all these different tournaments you know throughout the midwest uh notably when you and i played together and won the doble in michigan last year i had uh, a feeling that might cut up sh on. yeah shocker right uh, that, that that was one where we you know just kind of had to grind and be mature Mm -hmm. And more so you guys that spent most of the time on the court rather than me. But another one uh, was a couple months ago, the last Chicago Luau, like the week, the weekend tournament that I was at. Uh, you and a handful of uh, older guys on average found yourself in the finals against Lights Out. And there's there's Iceman players on both rosters, but that uh, I had the pre pleasure of refereeing that match. And you, uh, your guys pulled it out, I don't know, maybe 15-13 or 15-12 in set three. Uh, I think so. It, it was... 
Heck 12, of, or, 12 or 11. We had a little bit of breathing room. You might have. Uh, heck of a match. Uh, but I think what, what it really came down to was the the old guy, mature, level-headed, clutch playmaking ability. And it's so hard to quantify and really you know speak to exactly how that happens. But uh, try as best you can to, to talk about what what do you think makes a difference for you personally and for your teams when you're in tight situations? I think it's a combination of experience and faith in my teammates. Um, when we are, you know, if we have a, a, a pass that is out of system, uh, you know, it's late in the game, uh, it, like in, in set two for that, uh, for that match, we were down 23-18 or 23-19 yeah. uh, late, and they had won the first set. Right. Um, and, you know, I... I was at the service line, and I didn't go back there trying to get an ace and ace our way back to victory. I just put the ball in and had faith in my blockers and my defense that we were going to get touches and slow them down and uh, and and turn balls over so that we can keep getting one point at a time. Um, as far as you know, kind of being out of sy- out of system, like I said, uh, with the experience of playing with the players that I've been playing with and uh, for as long as I have, really recognizing to just not try to be the hero on every play. Um, you know, just recognizing that I, it might be, it's going to be safer if I'm out of system to put a solid high ball five feet in, five feet off that net and give my outside an opportunity to make a smart swing. Uh, you know, it may not be a kill, but we're definitely going to put them out of system um, and give our defense a chance to, again, uh, earn points. Great point. Yeah, just high-level volleyball stuff that comes with years and years and thousands and thousands of touches. Uh, I, I like noticing at the highest levels the offensive choices that your hitters make, or not yours in particular, but all, all high-level hitters make in relation to the block. And mm-hmm. like you said, it, um, a, a, the best possible swing at the time may not even necessarily be a kill. It might be the, the high-hand shot to 40 feet back that a middle-back defender can barely run down, or it might be the roll to the setter to make the libero take second ball. Like, all that stuff uh, illustrates the the brain power of your guys, in addition to the athleticism, and which is part of what makes volleyball just so cool. Yeah, I think that's uh, one of the things I love about uh, about watching the game so much is that it really is chess, not checkers. Totally. Uh, you know, every attacker has their their go to swing. You know, it's it's the same swing that they were. That was their high efficiency swing back when they were 15 and 16 when years it was old. Was going to score a point every time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Whether it's trying to make that f- uh, four to four cut or going high to the f- zone five, um, everybody has their go-to shot. But now everybody has significantly more uh, tools in the toolkit, and our game is to one try to get the other team out of system and make their attackers uncomfortable and their setter uncomfortable and frustrated uh, but also to recognize what their go-to shot is and do our best to stifle that attempt while still being ready for kind of off the cuff shots and off speed and that turn down the line towards the setter or uh, shot through the hands uh, of the block um, it really uh, is something exciting to see to watch the minds of the different players go up against each other totally it's uh yeah, like I said, it's an ex- exhibition and a, a testament to how smart you guys are in addition to how physical and athletic. And it's something that I try to point out when I'm commentating a match because like the, the people that haven't played or watched volleyball at the super high levels before don't understand how intentional a lot of these things are. Like I, I love when a guy, when an outside against a, a triple block will tap it into the high hands and cover it himself on purpose. Like these guys are doing. Yeah, reset the block, yep. right, reset yeah. the attempt. That's that's an intentional thing that is done that a lot of people like think, oh, that guy just got blocked and they got lucky to pick it back up. No, that's that's being done on purpose. Yep. Uh, a, lot of cool, and, a lot of cool stuff like that. Yeah, and as far as like setting, I... As whatever position you're playing, you have to learn from every every match, right? You learn from your teammates, you learn from your opponents. Uh, believe me, the last eight years of competing against Loy Ball has been a very very humbling experience. Uh, you know, I, I'm not one really to toot my own horn, but uh, he really, I've learned a lot from being on the other side of the court with him. I mean, it took me five years, I think, to beat him in a match, um, but I still relish every attempt because. You know, I'm there to battle. I love the game. I love uh, the. I know the other people on the other side of the court very well, uh, and uh, it's just a it's a great sport and a great experience. Part of what makes volleyball so cool is how you know community based it is, and how we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go have a beer with all the guys after the match after we play them. It's a part of what I love so much about it as well. Yeah, it's a it's quite the community. I don't think there's anything like it uh, in other in other uh, sports. Completely agree. 
So uh, let's talk a little bit about the league before we get you out of here to go run a practice yeah. of your own. Um, so your your role is you're you're the director of player relations. You're on the board. Um, Correct. So what? How much involvement is that? What are you kind of doing day to day from a league perspective past just the Iceman? Yeah. So right now, as uh, as the league is being so young, everybody has their hand in pretty much all the hats right now. Um, one of my focuses moving forward is going to be um, our, the VLA's attempts to start some clinics uh, w- that are going to happen with all of the uh, competitions that we have, so youth clinics, um, and part of that is organizing the clinic itself and the players in the VLA who are going to be coaching. Uh, Moving forward, I'm going to be more heavily involved in uh, communications and operations, uh, like directly involving the players' uh, involvement. So um, how are we going to organize contracts and commitments? Uh, What regulations are we going to have with um, their commitments to individual teams from season to season. How are we going to have multi-year contracts? Um, really, a lot of that is being discussed uh, within the board, and uh, and more responsibilities are going to be laid out as we move forward. That's league stuff, high-level league stuff. That are, it's characteristic of an organization that really has its stuff together and is thinking forward. Uh, several go big or go years. home. That's right. That's I think that's how we got to do it. That's how we got to build it. And I can't give you and the board enough credit with how much work has already been done uh, yeah. before even the first event. So yeah. uh, so you guys will be in Louisville. You'll have a really solid squad. You'll be playing against yeah. Phoenix and Team Pineapple. Mm-hmm. Uh, the people can follow along here on the YouTube channel, which, by the way, as we're recording, that I, I think just got to 1,000 subscribers. Oh, uh, awesome. Which is, which is outstanding. Uh, yeah, so you guys can all check out Tim and the Icemen on the court in Louisville the first week in April. Uh, you'll see them at the VLA Open in Minneapolis Memorial Day. Uh, you'll see them in Columbus at the JVA Summerfest, and then you'll see them at our finals, which will be in Reno at the end of the year in conjunction with USAV Boys J Nats. So you guys will be all over the place playing an awesome schedule. Yep. Feel free, uh, anybody who's out there listening, feel free to... Stop by before and after the match and, and chat us up. Uh, you know, the great thing about all these events is the ability to interact with all of the young players. It's um, so much you know, fun. There, there, I think, I forget who it was in, uh, in your other interviews. I think it was Loy that said, there are no ropes. Um, you know, we enjoy the conversations and, and people asking us about our careers and, you know, people asking for tips. You know, in, in, in past events, uh, you know, for kind of competitions, we have... Uh, gone and watched, you know, supporting players and their own matches uh, and really just kind of helped build the community from top to bottom. Well said, man. All right, uh, we'll get Timmy out of here to go run his Iceman practice. Uh, Make sure to give their team a follow at Chicago underscore Iceman underscore VLA uh, on social media. Um, Give the league a follow as well if you haven't already done that. Uh, Timmy, have a great practice. And until we see you in Louisville, we'll talk to you soon, buddy. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Great talking with you. Thanks for having me. Sure. Thanks, guys. See you next episode.